Four matches today as we take on West Ham, Aston Villa and Manchester United, all as live games. And we will sim the game against Brighton. Hello, everyone. What's going on? Welcome back to our career mode journey here with Watford. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch one of my videos. Hope you're doing well and having an awesome day as well. Um, if you missed the previous episode, I'll quickly catch you up with what happened. We made two new signings. There's two players who have joined us. Um, we've signed Tosin Adarabayoyo, who has come in from Fulham as part of a £9.5 million deal. And also, we signed Karim Adeyemi um, from Salzburg as part of a £15 million deal. So both of these guys will feature today. And hopefully, we'll play very well in uh, our Watford side, which currently we sit mid-table. 11th uh, with 15 games to go um, and also you'll know if you did see the previous episode we only have the Premier League to play for now we got knocked out of the FA Cup by Sunderland in a 2-1 defeat uh, yeah uh, we won't talk about that um, and Carabao Cup wise well we played both legs against Spurs and it didn't go to plan so we haven't got to worry about anything else other than Premier League football from this point forward. So without further ado, let's go into the first match then as we travel to the London Stadium to take on West Ham United. And it'll be a tough game to start today off, actually. Um, they're third. They're having a fantastic season. So yeah, we're going to have to be at our very best if we want anything from this match. Um, I am going to go ahead and change around the kits, though as it's pretty close to what they're wearing. We will go with our yellow, and we'll keep West Ham with their usual claret and blue. And I'm going to change around the team as well, so we'll talk about it in the game. And here is the side of the high-flying hammers. A 4-2-3-1, captained by Declan Rice. And uh, yeah, we know that they're going to be a tough, tough test here. Mikel Antonio leading the line for them on the bench. Ben Rama. Uh, one player to keep your eye on if he does make his way onto the field of play. For us, though, there is a start for Tossin at centre-back alongside Trooster Kong. Um, and that could be Watford's defensive partnership sorted for the rest of this season. Not to say that Cabasele hasn't done well, uh, but I just think with Trooster Kong and uh, Tossin together, those two are our strongest pairing at centre-back. And we also go... Brera and Diaz and Karim Adeyemi as the two strikers. Grant and Saar, of course, out wide. Here is Bardi, and he's got Adeyemi to his left. Here is Karim Adeyemi! His first for Watford. It's a thunderbolt into the top right corner. And West Ham are stunned inside 12 minutes. What a finish. And there's one thing as well. Even if we are out of both cops... Uh, unless we put, like, a magnificent run together to get into Europe, we can take the matches game by game and just enjoy them because I highly doubt that we're going to go down at this point in time. But if we do manage to put a run together in which we climb the table and maybe do push for European football, that would be brilliant. And Andy Amy, welcome to Watford. Sissoko out wide towards his male Asar. We know the delivery that he's got, but Cresswell... Does not allow him to put the cross into the box just yet. But we will get ourselves a throw in here. And we'll throw it out to Ngakia. Good control. Now Sissoko. Bardi on the edge of the penalty area. Bardi. A 1-2 with Sissoko. It's absolutely brilliant. Now Saar. Crossing. Adiemi waiting. And Areola saving. Denying Adiemi his second goal. In his second game, actually. I've just realised. It's not Adiemi's debut. Um, so it's not a debut goal for him. But still, one in two. It's still great for Adiemi, and it really should have been 2-2, two two, but for Areola making the save. Menezes towards Fornals, and now Socek. Thomas Socek finding the pass out wide to Sofal. And West Ham, that's a great-looking ball through. Antonio's in. Foster out quickly to meet him, though. Makes the save. Sanchez, Antonio again. Socek, Rice given away to Saar. West Ham's best moment of the game thus far. Here is Grant, forward towards Adiemi, and now Bardi. Waiting in the middle is Brerett and Diaz. Bardi's ball, though, is a little bit overhit as Grant tries to win it back. Fornals only can help it forward towards Isoko. Bardi towards Grant. Great first touch from Grant. Deflected. Watford are two in front. A minute to go until half time. Carl and Grant with a goal. But I wonder, is he going to get credited with it? Because there was a big deflection to take it past Areola in the West Ham United goal. And Bardi's ball forward, lovely first touch from Carl and Grant. You've got to give him major credit for that. And then the shot 
ricocheting through. It's on target, so I see no reason why Carlon Grant won't get credited with the goal. And we will just make sure of that as the... Yeah, he does. There you go. So Grant adds our second in what has been a very good first half of football for us. Brerett and Diaz. Ball through for Saar, who is going to get there, but... The angle is not great for a delivery. Saar, though, looking still to create something. Now Kamara. Now Bardi. Turning. Bardi looking to place it. Zuma handball. Adiemi puts the ball into the empty net. But the referee had already given the penalty. So it will be Watford with a chance to make it three. Bardi's effort. I mean, yeah. What is Zuma doing with his hands there in the air like that? It bounces off his chest onto his arm. And it actually looks like it's Grant who's taken responsibility here for the penalty for Watford. So Carlin Grant then has the chance to make it three saved. Ariola guesses correctly, makes the save. It was a decent penalty from Grant in the corner. Fair play to the West Ham United goalkeeper. Can we create from the corner though? Sissoko is the player to take this. Sent in and headed clear. Grant will pick up the loose ball. Keep it alive with Bardi now then. Bardi into the area, going for goal. How has that gone through? We don't care. It's three for Watford. And it is, quite honestly, a remarkable display from our lads. What a performance this has been. Sanchez through to Antonio. Antonio now then with the ball in towards the middle. Truster Kong is underneath it and does win the header for Watford. And Amy can't get it out of his sweet feet quick enough as Vlasic sends the ball through. Menezes pulls one back for West Ham. It's a lifeline. Is it a way back into the game? And that was a little bit unfortunate for us. Adi Amy just not able to start his feet quick enough to get the ball and maybe find the pass. And then when we lose it, they do a really good job, actually, the Hammers, of getting the ball forward quickly. Doesn't allow us time to set. There's the moment where Adi Amy loses it. And then there, Vlasic ball through. Menezes finishes. 3-1. Grant inside to Bardi. Bardi now then. Ball forward to Brerett and Diaz. Brerett and Diaz can play it to Ismail Saar. Saar turning on the left foot. Going for goal. It's four. It is truly... Truly brilliant from Ismail Assar. And he's not really been on the ball all that much today for Watford. So that shows you the kind of performance we're putting in. Saar is probably one of our best players and he's had a quiet day. Yet the scoreline is 4-1. Three goal advantage restored and breathing space as well once again as Bardi has actually probably had his best game in a Watford shirt here today. And as Bardi has been brilliant. Everybody in a Watford shirt has been brilliant to be fair. Saar again, um, now we'll find Bardi again. And United, who were dropping points against Burnley before at 1-1. And now 3-1 in front. So, yeah, they won't be dropping points today. As the ball goes inside to Rice. Forward to Antonio. A Congo is in the way, but we aren't actually on the ball. As Antonio with the ball through. Menezes, who's already scored his first of the new season. As we go diving in to try and block what I thought was going to be the shot. He stays composed, lays the ball across, it's 4-2, Vlasic on the score sheet, Bardi in quickly to win it off of Rice, it's brilliant from him, and now he's waiting for Saar to give him the run down the right hand side, here is Ismail Saar, into the penalty area, stays on his feet, maybe no, goes down under the challenge of Aaron Cresswell, there's no doubt about it, it is a penalty kick, Cresswell can complain all he wants, but he's got no real leg to stand on, gets nowhere near the ball, Grant who's already missed one today, Went to the left-hand side last time. Does he go there again? Well, yeah, it looks like we will. And we are going to go top corner this time. No, that wasn't top corner. You can see where he aimed it. It didn't go there. And Areola ends up saving another penalty. Grant missing two spot kicks today. I don't know. I can't get my head around penalties. Sometimes I feel like I'm improving. And then all of a sudden, I just keep missing them. And it's, yeah, sometimes I feel like I'm getting better. And then I miss like four in a row. As Bardi goes for goal again. This time denied by Areola. Five additional minutes by the referee. And what's happened here? Menezes is in. And Foster saves. I tell you, if it wasn't for Ben Foster there, this would have made it a very nervy few minutes had Menezes have scored that. Still, three minutes to go. 4-2 the scoreline. And we deserve three points. So if we weren't to get it now, I'd be bitterly disappointed. Kamara keeping calm to play it out towards Saar. And now Fernandez. Fernandez trying to play the ball wide as he's somehow still got it here. And now will eventually play it to Grant. Saar is over on the right-hand side. Grant looking for the switch of play. Cresswell underneath it. Ref, you can bring the game to a close. And I am very happy with the start of today's episode. A 4-2 victory. 
over the high flying hammers is not something I was expecting to say at the start of the episode. But that is what we've managed. And that sets us up nicely to go to Brighton or have Brighton visitors actually at Vicarage Road, isn't it? For the next one, which will be simmed before we have the two away games on the bounce. And as I said, three shots for West Ham and they scored two of them. We had 11, so that shows you our dominance. So, yeah, disappointing to have conceded two there, but it happens. At least we got the win. Man United 3, Burnley 2. So they only just managed to win their game. Out of curiosity, how many points are we away from a potential European spot? Seventh is Leicester, and they're only four ahead of us. And actually, Spurs in sixth and City in fifth are only five clear. We actually could do this, you know. We're on 33. What's the relegation zone saying? 19, which is Norwich. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to speak too early, but Europe is a possibility, as Dennis is disappointed that we left him out. I know. I have to rotate the squad, I'm going to say, and Fletcher, unfortunately, mate, I don't think you've got a chance of getting in the team. Um, there's, what, three strikers ahead of him? Already on the team sheet. And he has been transfer listed, remember, since the start of the series. But haven't had an offer yet for him. As we do take on Brighton, as I say. So, we will go ahead and sim this one. Adiemi will keep his spot in the side. Unchanged, I think. Um, but I do actually have to make a couple of changes. Because I changed it round in the other screen before. Which means it hasn't saved here. Um, so, that is that. There we go. Right. Brighton, please can we get the, win, uh, get the win after simming it. They're in 19th. They're coming to our place. Quick sim. Let's see. What's the result? A 2-1 victory. Sissoko and Grant. And I was just saying about the fact that West Ham had three shots and scored two. We've done the exact same, so I take it back. Next stop, it's Villa at Villa Park. Big game this one for our hopes in Europe. Villa are in sixth. So if we could win this, essentially, it feels like it's a six-pointer. We take three from them and we gain three, of course, ourselves. And here is Gerard's men. That is the team he's gone with. Ahead of this one, Ollie Watkins on the bench. And for us, it's unchanged from the side that you just saw beat West Ham and Brighton. So, yeah, if it's working, don't change it. Actually, no, Fernandez. Fernandez is in the squad ahead of Bardi, which I didn't realise. And that wasn't intentional. I meant to play Bardi. My bad. Still, other than that, we are unchanged. So no pressure, Fernandez. but Bardi was absolutely brilliant when we faced West Ham. And speaking of pressure, Fernandez has just given the ball away immediately as the ball goes forward from Aston Villa. And they've got John McGinn with another ball into the box. That's a great pass, and already we're behind. Leon Bailey strikes, and it is a disastrous start from Watford. Why did I have to start talking about Fernandez? Why did I say no pressure for him to then give away the ball? And then within a minute, they score. It's well worked by Villa, you've got to say that. And you can see Leon Bailey just runs off of Camaro, doesn't pick up Bailey's run. And he's not going to miss from there, is he? Coutinho, now Ramsey, Douglas Luiz. Villa enjoying themselves inside the first seven minutes here. We've not been able to get on the ball all too often. Ings, Ramsey, I mean, they're popping it around so well. We actually can't get close to them. It feels like Leicester all over again from a few weeks ago. And if Trooster Kong wasn't positioned there expertly, it was 2-0 Villa. Thank goodness Trooster Kong was in the way, though. Brilliant defending, but we are all over the shop here. And this might get worse very, very quickly. Kamara able to intercept that. A minute added on by the referee in this first half, of which a disastrous start. We've grown into the half really well. And Brera and Diaz find Saar. Chance right at the end of it for us. It's made a saw. He's put it wide. We've seen him so often in that position this season. And he hits the target. But this time around, it's unfortunately wide. And is that an omen? Is it going to be one of those days for us here? As I say, after that disastrous start, we have grown into the game well. Adiemi allowed to go forwards. Goes past the challenge and still going here, Adiemi. And testing Martinez. Who was equal to it. Great run and a pretty good strike at the end of it as well. One minute left of injury time here as Villa seemingly are going to win it by a goal to nil courtesy of that goal right at the start. We had a chance there but we couldn't get the pass through and that is full time. Frustration for Watford. Just the single goal man. Think back to the Sarchi to the first half. 
Nine times out of ten, he buries that. Final game of the episode as we face Manchester United at Old Trafford. De Gea in goal for United. Juan Basaka, Varane, Lindelof and Vindal as the back four. Fred Brozovic and Bruno Fernandes, the skipper in midfield. Rashford, Ronaldo, Saigankov as the front three. Decent bench as well. Well, I say decent. It's phenomenal. Pogba, Sancho, Cavani, just to name three that United can call upon during the 90 minutes here. We've made one change to that side that you just saw lose as Bardi's in for Fernandes. Uh, but we stick with the front four of Saar, Brerett and Diaz, Adiemi and Grant. There was a temptation actually to bring Dennis or pa uh, Jao Pedro in for Brerett and Diaz. Um, but I've decided to stick with our number nine for now. If there's one thing for certain, you can expect goals from this one as Saigankov. Surely that's our throwing ref. How's that their ball? I, I, I looked like Saigankov had touched the ball last, but linesman and referee says no. But yeah, you can expect goals from this. United, as you can see, setting up with their fullbacks joining the attack anyway. And you know what we play in terms of our formation and whatnot. And that is not a penalty. That's the reason I wanted to turn the handballs off. But I didn't do because I thought to myself, let's keep it on. Let's spice things up. But when things like this get given in a game of this magnitude against a side like Manchester United, ridiculous. Sissoko, that's never a penalty. And Ronaldo's got the opportunity now then against Ben Foster. Ha 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 ha, that is justice. It was never a penalty. We'll say Ronaldo missed it to be sportsmanlike, but uh, I think he's just skied it. Fair enough. 35 minutes in here, all square at the moment. Kamara through to Adiemi. Brilliant ball. Adiemi! Oh, De Gea! We did everything right. Adiemi did everything right. But that's the problem. When we create a chance against United, we've then got to get past David De Gea. Oh, it's one thing creating the chance. It's a whole other taking it. Good save. So to have the corner for us. Looking at the near post, actually, because Fred's marking it. And there's Sissoko! Glorious chance. Glorious chances. Watford. So, so unlucky to not be one nil in front, it feels like. Injury time of the first half. Adi Amy. Allowed to run forward here by United. Still got it here, Adi Amy. And now Bardi. Bardi looking to try and open up the angle. Cuts it back on the right foot. Trying to place it. De Gea's there again. And it's cleared away. And I tell you what, from a first half here at Old Trafford, we've been the side on top. We've had the better chances. We just have to believe that the goal is coming for us because it feels that way at the moment. But the quality that United have got... That is what can happen. I can't believe they've just taken the lead like that. Honestly, that's the way we concede, is it? Ball to the back post. Kamara wins it. Back into the middle. Ronaldo in between our two centre-backs. Free header. 1-0 United. Sometimes I don't like football. And this, this is one of those times. Now Rashford, Ronaldo, it's two. Just, it's... <sighs> I've got to watch him celebrate as well. There I was laughing earlier when he missed the penalty. Not laughing now, am I? Adi Amy, Grant is looking to get in behind. Grant! 2-1. It's a goal. It's a lifeline. And is it a way back in? Carlon Grant with the goal. Found by Adi Amy. Brilliantly taken. Top corner. Adi Amy towards Bardi and Bardi's charging towards United's goal. Blocked by Lindelof and Bardi up in the air. Penalty! Penalty given! Don't miss it. Just don't miss it. Just don't miss it. Just don't miss it. It's fine. We won't miss it. Ronaldo coming off. We'll make a change actually as well. Cavani's on for them. I'm not going to miss this penalty, ladies and gentlemen. I will not miss the penalty. So confident with Grant that I'm going to even put it to the left-hand side. Because there's no way the goalkeeper goes there a third time. Oh, I've put it wide. Oh, I've missed it! Fred Rashford. Well, what am I meant to do against that? One touch. Bang. Marcus Rashford with a thunderbolt. 3-1 United. Think I'm about done for today's episode in terms of matches. Like, yeah. This is this has just knocked any sort of momentum, confidence, whatever. The 1-0 against Villa was bad enough because I didn't feel like we deserved to lose that in the end. 
off the balance of, you know, the fact they had that one goal and then other than that didn't really offer that much more. But here, like, the chances we had in the first half and then to then see them score the opener the way they did, I just, I feel like we've been hard done by. And I know I've said that quite a few times throughout the course of this season, but I, I truly do feel that United here don't deserve to be 3-1 up. But such is football. As Bardi now then looking to place it. It's 3-2. But it doesn't matter now because we've already conceded the third. I, I'm lost for words. Why do we do this? Why is it when we're two goals down, we pull this out the bag? Where's it been for the rest of the game? It's a tremendous finish. Just needed to see it earlier. Two minutes left of the 90. Sissoko, Bardi towards Grant. Grant with a cross. Dennis wins his header. Away by Varane. Nobody there to challenge for us though. And Cavani controls it. Manchester United 3. Watford 2. Does not do us any justice whatsoever. And you can see the lads. They look absolutely heartbroken. Because we deserve something from the game. I've said that against Liverpool this season. I'm pretty certain the first time we played United I said it there as well. Just how have we lost this 3-2? I'll tell you how. I can't take penalties. 10 shots to United 6. More shots. More proactive. Didn't get anything. And what was I saying about a European dream? Forget that. Forget it. Just forget it. Um, well, my friends, that is going to take us into the month of March then. And here is how we end today's episode. We are in 11th where we started. 10 wins, 6 draws, 11 defeats. I need to get better at penalties. That is for certain. Um, we are now 6 points still though. Away from 7th. But Spurs do have a game in hand. But if they were to win that, it'd be Arsenal who drop into 7th. And they're on 42 as well. Um, yeah, losing more games than we've won this season is not a great look. But it's something that I'll try and improve on if we can. <laughs> We've got 11 games to go and yeah, uh, relegation is not something that I think is possible. Still going to try and go as much as we can for uh, European football in terms of our youth academy. Here it is. Um, actually, wait, no, that's the scouting. Uh, where's our youth players? There they are, youth academy. Uh, here it is. And these are the uh, players that we've got then. Um, O'Grady's still at the club. I am going to be promoting him once he hits 16. And whilst we're at it as well, let's promote Adam Lloyd, who looks to have a pretty good potential. And I'll sort the rest of these players out as and when I feel necessary. Um, squad Hub, we'll show you a quick squad report before we go. Grant, yes, he's missed three penalties, but that's not Grant. That's just me. I am absolutely terrible at penalties. So do not blame Carl and Grant in any way, shape or form. He has been one of the shining lights in this Watford side. 14 Premier League goals in 24 games with seven assists is a fantastic return. Sar as well, 7 and 8. Brerett and Diaz, not really done what I was expecting him to. 7 goals in 25, which I suppose is still one in just over 3 games, right? Um, yeah, which similarly, Adeyemi's got 1 in 5 in the Premier League. So we need to see a bit more of a return from him. bardi has been good today, even though we only picked up one win, which was West Ham United. Uh, when the episode started and we won 4-2, I was buzzing. I was thinking, here we go. Today's going to be a good day. And then we've lost two on the bounce. Um, but we've got Arsenal, Southampton and Everton in the next episode as we look to pick up as many points as we can from that. And then in April, Liverpool, we've got City, uh, three home games. I'll decide which one of those I'm going to be playing when we get to April. And then May to is going to be Palace, Leicester and Chelsea to finish off the season. Um, until next time, massive thank you for watching this episode. If you did enjoy it, even though I miss penalties for fun, I can imagine that it frustrates you lovely people as much as it frustrates me as well. Promise, I'll try and get better at them. Just feels like no matter what though, even if the goalkeeper guesses right, even if you put it in the corner, they still save it. I don't know. Um, maybe I'm just making excuses. But yeah, have a great day, have a great evening, and I will see you all again next time. Adios!